Hey everyone, welcome back to Jarlev, and welcome to Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. I recently picked this game up on the Steam Summer Sale, and I've been really enjoying it. So far I've done two of the endings, and I thought, maybe I should uh, do one on YouTube. So the ending we're going for is the Blade Gleaming at Sunrise achievement ending. Basically we have to recruit at least one ally, but not recruit all of them. So yeah, I, I really like this game, this should be pretty fun. Let's start a game. How long does it normally take? It takes like an hour to complete the game, so this will be a pretty quick series. So let's start a new game here, just normal mode. And absolutely I'm playing on casual. Hell yeah. I was once a man who'd been given the moon's curse by demons. That man was Zengetsu. Wrapped in crimson garb with eyes like fire, he relentlessly pursued the demons who cursed him. As he journeyed from one pit of darkness to another, He'd stop at nothing until he struck down every last demon in his path. One night, he sensed the looming presence of a great demon. He swore to eradicate all demons, no matter how much of a threat they posed. Bathed in moonlight, he cried out as he drew his sword, which consumes the darkness from within its wretched steel. On that night, either the demons or the moon itself would feel the wrath of his blade. Zoop. There we are, Zengetsu. That's me. Uh, so basically, casual mode just means you have infinite lives, as you can see in the top left, so like you won't get a game over. Um, and there's also no knockback from attacks. That is the only difference. I'm gonna assume most people know about this game. Maybe not. Um, we we it, it's. Very Castlevania y, it's very inspired by like uh, Castlevania 3. Um, the uh, the weapon points in the top right, we can fill that up by getting these little blue things from killing enemies or uh, these little lamps. And we use those to do a special attack, which you'll see. Uh, I can just press Y to do it, each character has a different one. You can see up in the top left, I've got this pointy thing, it's actually a whip that I shoot upwards like that. Oh no, my first damage. Speedrun over. Wee. And the purple ones can usually give you a different attack. Oh, these fucking rats. So now we've got a, like the scroll that we throw down. Which is pretty good for certain enemies. I think later in the game you get a way better special attack, but I don't think we have access to it at the beginning. Eh. Let's throw that one down. I like that one, that's pretty good. When I first started I definitely preferred the whip, but I think I like this one more now. Uh, let's see what this one gives us. Gives us the whip again, we'll skip over it. Oops. Stab. Ow. Not doing this very well so far. <laughs> Off we go on a train. This is one of my favorite levels, actually. The train level is really fun. Also, it's still really easy at this point. <laughs> and yeah, you're not punished for like skipping past enemies or anything. Like you get a lesser score, obviously. But that's literally it. Pretty sure, yeah, it's just a scroll, we'll take it. Because they're pretty good for these things. They're like turrets that shoot. Bam! <laughs> Oops. You can see it doesn't, doesn't use up too many of our weapon points. Bam. So we're actually almost at the first boss. Have to kill this guy, luckily this really helps with it. Get out of here. Cool. And that'll put us to almost full. Then we get like one room before the boss. Yeah, this is the room before the boss, so we can just like fill up on uh, on hearts and weapon points. We are good to go. Let's try and let's die on the first boss, because that'd be 
Very embarrassing. There he is, it's a big train robot thing. And each boss has like this kinda kinda gimmick thing. So this one says periodically he reaches out and grabs these. So we have to stand on them and that's when we can attack him. Oh shit. Oh, I definitely should have taken the whip here. <laughs> there we go. That hits him. I should have jumped that one. Now he's gonna drop back down in a moment. We just have to dodge these. Or not. And yeah, now he's gonna do this thing again. So we'll try and stay on it this time. <laughs> I'm so bad at this fight. Can jump this? Nah, sort of. Yeah, this is way easier with the whip, because I could be hitting him right now. Oh, that got him a little bit. Okay, jump that. I think you probably have to go back to jump that. There we go. We got him. Oops. Yeah, every boss has this like ultimate attack that they can do, like a, a last attack just before they die. So I, I got hit by it, but I did not die. Damn, 11,000. So cool. Alright, so we, because we defeat the first boss, we actually get our first ally here. Um, but instead of talking to her, we're gonna murder her. And steal her soul. <laughs> so now we can use a new soul art. Uh, which just means I can now do a big slash attack. Like, normally I'd just be doing that, but I can do this. It's half moon slash attack, what's it called? It's called Crescent Moon, that's it. And it's actually really, really strong. So remember, we, we have to recruit at least one ally, but not all of them. So now we could recruit the rest if we want. Stage two. Boink, boink. Yeah, we got the whip back. We're still one-shotting these. But you can see you can hit like all over with this thing. It's very strong. Of course the downside is that we just have one character now, like before you could switch between characters, like if one was getting low or something. But yeah, we just we just have Zangatsu now. Aha, now that's the, that's the good power-up. We use it like kind of like a Dark Souls buff. We use it like we buff our weapon a little bit. And we do way more damage for a short amount of time. So it's really good for saving for bosses. Or tough enemies. Hi. Goodbye. <laughs> Unfortunately, platform is a pretty big part of this game. It's probably my biggest weakness. Just in games in general. <laughs> Bam. There we go. <laughs> Instantly. Second second moving platform of the whole game. Dead. And now, um, when you die, you get reset down to uh, 10 weapon points. And you also lose the, the weapon art you had. So I've got to get my, my 20 back, my 40 back. Oh, that's the good one. Yay. Get out of here. Back. <laughs> the, the big blue drugs give you 10 points, so it's, it's pretty easy to get back up to 40. And we just got healed. Concentrate a little bit here. Oh god. 
Get out of here. Oh, I missed him. I'm trying to get the hearts. Because we're still at half health. Oh, God. There we go. So these are actually quite easy to hit in the air if you time the jump attack. Oh. So you can actually get into like a pretty good rhythm with them. But I'm not in it right now, so we'll just run. <laughs> but we're currently at 40, 40 weapon points already. Still 40. As long as we get into the boss with probably like half health. I'm pretty good at the, the second boss, actually. Some bosses I'm really, really bad at. But first one, first one not too bad, despite what it may look like, <laughs> or may have looked like. Oops. You can also um, attack most like projectiles in this game, so I think like even those like fire things I could attack. Okay, so we have to kill, we have to get past him to get to the boss. So I'm gonna buff up and I'll go back and get the points here. There we go, we're at 40. Heart? No heart. Uh, if we had the other character that we killed, we could actually slide in there and get this kind of upgrade thing. Oh, we gotta kill another one. We can actually kill him pretty easily, we just jump the attack, which I did not do. We didn't need to buff him. In fact, we probably don't even need to buff for the boss. Oh, there we go, we got up to pretty much full health. Ah, shit. Should be the boss. I don't know like any of the names or anything, because it's such an old school kind of game. It doesn't show their names. It probably does in Ritual of the Night. Gotta try and remember his pattern. So we jump, and we have to dodge three of these. And then him. Go. Buff. Oops. You can do this without getting hit. I'm not doing it. Jesus Christ. What am I doing? Taking way too much damage here. Oh right, he doesn't do anything there. Those should be free attacks. You could probably one-cycle him, actually. I think I've probably got like two hits left in me. <laughs> dodge the turtle. Now we gotta try and dodge the bubbles. I'll just try and get rid of the bubbles if we can. <laughs> oh, fuck me. <laughs> that was such a bad fight. I'm usually way better at that fight. The whip's probably better for it. So we'll see if we can grab a whip on the way through here. Oh no, we start with the whip, don't we? You don't need that many weapon points for it either. So we can probably go in without full. I said I was good at that one. Wait until the ones that I'm bad at. So if we can get over to him before he starts attacking. Damn it. Because we can still attack when we're crouched down like this. Probably wait for the bubbles here. So when they spin, we can get rid of a few of them. Where are you going? And yeah, now we'll just stand next to him. And when we have to crouch down, we can just go right next to him and just keep attacking. There we go. 
got to look out for his final attack, but we're full health, so even if it hits us, we should survive. There we go. <laughs> it did, like, a bar, maybe? <sighs> I think that's how, like, every game's gone. Like, the first time I die to him pretty embarrassingly, and the second time I just destroy him. And again, because we defeat the boss, we get another ally, but we don't need this one. We want the ability we get. And this ability is... Blood Moon. We can now double jump, and still do this attack. So there's only three allies, so we're going to have to save the next one. But like, the, the ability you get for killing the last ally isn't really that good, it's a little dash which isn't that good. So, this is the perfect combo here. Ooh, going with like the backswing there. Nailed it, sort of. See, so yeah, there's uh, eight stages in the game. As you can see, we're kind of blasting through it. I thought you saw on the, the main menu Uh, the full thing takes me, like, just over an hour. This one should probably be even less than the second one. So it might be under an hour. So yeah, it's a very short series. So don't worry about it taking too long. This, this room's a little bit spooky. You have to keep jumping or you fall in. You start sinking into the sand. We don't even need to double jump here, though. <laughs> oh, those guys are pretty spooky. Nice, that's a lot of damage. Again, that's another bit we could get under if we had the uh, second character. But here's the mimics. Oh. God damn it. Oh, how'd they get... I could have sworn I had the other one. Die. Pretty low on health here. <laughs> yeah, let's get that one. How dare you. How dare you. Oh my god, I'm so low on health. Very embarrassing. <laughs> There's lots of checkpoints, though. So yeah, we just restart from this room. Sometimes you have to go back, like... Yeah, two or three rooms. I think the most I've ever done was, like, four rooms. Wow, just right into the fire. Fuck those things. <laughs> run. See, I, I absolutely love this game, but I have no interest in playing Ritual of the Night. Like, A, it's really expensive for what it is. Like, it looks very high quality, but it's too expensive for me. Um, and also just, I really like the look of this game way more. The other one looks good on some platforms, apart from the Switch, am I right? <laughs> you fucking bats! Whew, got him. <laughs> Just take these platforms very carefully. Sometimes, like, the double jump fucks me over a lot. Because I get, get impatient, I'm like, yeah, I can totally make that. It's so, like, these kinds of bits I have to force myself just to normal jump. Otherwise, I just fling myself into the pit. Happens a lot. We're actually getting close to the boss. I think the boss of this level is my favorite in the whole game. It's really, really fun. Like, I wish after you'd beaten the game that you could just replay levels, but, like, only do the boss. I know there's a boss rush mode, uh, which I haven't tried yet. It sounds quite fun. 
But yeah, it'd be cool if you could just, like, go right to the boss. Ah, they're coming. Okay, here we go. Boss fight. So it's kind of tricky uh, without the uh, double jump and the uh, the moon slash one, but with those two abilities, this boss is a cakewalk. He has to have to jump up and be able to attack his head. Obviously, we can't reach him from down here even with double jump. So he pushes along these piles of coins, which you can destroy, but because... I can double jump, I barely have to destroy them. I have to destroy this third one here. Actually, no, I don't. <laughs> Not bad. So we could probably two-cycle this guy. So after three, he gets his hands up in the air. You just kind of track him back and forth a little bit, wait for him to stop. You can use that to jump up and attack again. He summons a bunch of things, but they all die to the coins. <laughs> might be able to do it on the next one, actually. Nah, not quite. Should kill him on the next one here. There we go. Easy. And his final attack, we just have to dodge the coins here. The last one, it'll go white. Ah, got caught. <laughs> Really, really easy boss. I love that one, though. Even though, like, I hate platforming, so you think I wouldn't like that one, but that one's really fun. Really like that boss. There's some that I absolutely hate. But I think that's a really cool boss. I know it appears in, um, Ritual of the Night, so, like, that's almost enough to make me want to get it. <laughs> Just to be able to play my favorite boss again.